In today's video, I'm going to show you how I open up the front and the back of the new iPhone 14 and 14 Plus. And I'm excited to show you the tools that I will be using to open them. Let's get started. First, there was this tool. Then there was this. We got a bit of an upgrade and even tools like this from Apple. We step it up with this tool and then we get to this tool. This is a machine by Apple. It's a machine that I thought was probably a little bit of overkill as we've always been able to separate the screens with pry tools, suction cups, heat pads. But I've realized after using it that it's not only just a helpful machine to have, but it's also probably gonna be something that we need for the iPhone 14 and above. There are two screws at the bottom, just like normal on this iPhone 14 and 14 plus. We'll go ahead and set our phones into the mold. Clamp it down and insert it into the machine. We'll do the same with our other iPhone. We'll turn on the machines. And carefully slide them in. Now these machines can be somewhat finicky. They'll throw error codes at you if you insert them incorrectly or have even the suction cup in the, in the wrong spot. Once in there, the temperature will slowly rise. When it gets to a certain point, it'll switch over to a two minute countdown, which means that it has reached temperature and it gives us two minutes to heat up to where it'll be much easier to remove the screen or the back glass in this case. The reason I'm removing the back glass on these iPhone 14s is because the battery connector is on the back side. And to be safe, I like to disconnect the batteries whenever I'm working inside of a phone. After those two minutes are up, it'll beep, which indicates that we need to lower the suction cup and it will continue to beep until you do so. Using the term knob, I can slowly start to pull up using the suction cup and you can see that it starts to release slowly. Using a little isopropyl alcohol might help this process speed up. I don't use it in this video, but I'm sure like any adhesive, it'll help it come off quicker. Using the suction cup further out on the glass creates a lot of flex. So at some point, I like to remove the suction, move the suction cup back a little bit and reapply it. That way I even out the distribution of the pressure so that I'm not flexing the glass as much. The really cool thing about these molds is they're designed to hold the phone in place and allow the glass, either the screen or the back glass to come off. Now this is designed for the iPhone 12 and 13, but it just so happens that it works for the 14 as well. Once I've got it lifted up enough, I can take it off, unclip and slide out the mold, release the hinge, and remove the phone. There's a flex cable that I need not to damage. I'm gonna carefully push the glass over on one side so that I can insert my pry tool in the top and disconnect the little brackets that are at the top of the phone. I want to do this without damaging the paint behind the glass, as there is no bezel to protect that paint from getting scratched. Which is another reason why I think this tool is necessary. As all experienced techs will know, when you're opening up, say, an iPad screen, even if you're careful, you're using all the tricks in the book with heat, isopropyl alcohol, the right pry tools, you can sometimes even shatter that glass. And that's, I think, is going to be the case on these back glasses because there is no bezel to kind of cushion a tool being pried against it. 
I'll do the same on the other phone, and you can see now when I open it up, there's a bracket with a single screw that holds down that connector. And on the battery bracket, there are two screws that'll protect the battery connector that we can remove, and then we can take the back off. I'll do the same on the other phone. The brackets and the screws, everything is basically identical between the 14 and 14 Plus so far. Now it's time to remove the front. We'll go ahead and set them back in the molds and clamp them down. It'll take less time now that the molds are still warm for it to heat up and get ready for removal. I'll pull the suction cups back out to the edge. I'll remove the annoying beeping by lowering the, the suction cup and locking it down. Now I can carefully twist and start to lift both screens. Again, using some isopropyl alcohol, isopropyl alcohol here might help in the process. And these displays being OLEDs, I don't have any problem doing that. I just didn't do it in this video. I'll carefully assist it with my pry tool here. And I'll do the same I did on the back where I'll adjust the location of the suction cups. Now that the screen has basically been removed, we'll slide the molds out again. Unlock them. And doing the same thing we did on the back, I'll pry away the screen, keeping in mind the location of the flex cable so that I don't damage them. And there we have it. Two little brackets with a single screw in each. Let's do the same with the other phone. This phone kind of rem reminds me of the adult version of an iPhone 4, where you kind of go through it starting at the back, working your way towards the front. We'll disconnect the proximity sensor and the display. There's three different sizes of molds for the mini, the standard ser series, and the larger series for the iPhone 12, 13, and now 14. And there we go, both the front and the back successfully removed without damage. I will be doing full teardowns of both of these phones. Subscribe so you don't miss out on those videos. Thanks for the time for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.